Good morning, uh, chairpersons and friends. I thank uh, Dr. Ravi and the organizers for this opportunity. Uh, what is most important in a Bennett fracture is the diagnosis. Many times in a X-ray of the hand, AP and oblique, this fracture may be missed. So whenever there is pain at the base of the thumb, have a zoom in view involving the radial side and you may see a fracture like this, which appears very innocuous and described by this gentleman in this picture. But however, if you manage it uh, incorrectly, it can result in very long standing pain and follow up osteoarthritis. So that's the importance of this fracture. It's a, you know, overload injury, very commonly seen in our cricket playing people. Uh, so any history like that, you must look at it. And what is important is that these, the major ligaments of the thumb are attached to the very small fragment while the rest of the large distal metacarpal can actually be pulled into displacement by the various muscle forces such as the adductor pollicis, which is pulling it into adduction and supination, and uh, the uh, abductor pollicis longus, which will pull it proximally. That is what makes this uh, fracture dislocate. So that's why it's called a Bennett fracture dislocation. Uh, various views which actually can localize this fracture are used. The most common is the Jeddah view, otherwise also called the Betts and Clements view. And it basically is the way I've shown there, your pronated hand and you shoot straight. So that's important. Rarely you may have to do CT scan, especially if you want to rule out comminution and the other type of fracture, that's a Rolando fracture, which is an intra-articular comminuted fracture of the base rather than a single fragment. So that's a, just to show a picture. Here is the X-ray. You can actually think there is comminution, but the CT scan clearly reveals comminution. So in case you need it, please don't hesitate to do a CT scan. And management, it is an unstable fracture inherently. These muscle forces need to be negated and... Other than undisplaced fracture, this is a fracture which requires a fixation. And late onset osteoarthritis have been reported to be much more when the reduction is pure, poor. Aim to restore the, or retain the articular surface as in any other fracture. And if you look at literature, more than 20 different methods have been reported, but the treatment options as far as I am concerned are these three. Close reduction and plaster of Paris, especially in the undisplaced ones. Close reduction and internal fixations and open reduction and internal fixation, especially when the fragment size is more than 20% of the articular surface. So this is the indication for the treatment, again. Chan Lee's book gives extremely uh, really good way of how to reduce this. And this is what he said, crank and connecting rod principle. So you need to actually pull the thumb out and push it back into, get this reduction. You go, the crank goes to either side, the fracture becomes uh, again displaced. So that's important to maintain it in such a way that your fraction is given correctly. Now, how to close reduce this? Again, longitudinal traction is applied to negate the pull of the abductor pollicis longus. The supination and adduction has to be corrected by pronating the metacarpal, as you can see here in this uh, picture. And then you press, give the pressure at the base of the thumb, metacarpal base. And again, always confirm correct restoration of the articular surface by an image intensification, intensifier. Now, how to maintain a close reduction? Again, as you're putting a cast, you must press over the base of the thumb inwardly to maintain that reduction. And at the same time, the head needs an extension force. So that is important, not at the metacarpal phalangeal joint, but at the metacarpal head. You have to give an extension force and put a POP cast. Once in a cast, you must take, keep taking check, check x-rays because it is possible that the fracture can re-dislocate. So if you're managing, planning to manage conservatively, please continue with check x-rays. And you put a thumb spiker cast as shown here. Now, close reduction. This is probably, and fixate, KY fixate, this is probably the most accepted method. There are three fixation techniques have been advised. One is you can transfix the base of the first metacarpal to the trapezium. That is fine, a single K wire. But to be more stable, you go for the Isselin technique. That is, you can have two K wires going into the second metacarpal. The fracture can be included in your fixation or need not necessarily be. Again, as you see, the combination of both into the trapezium and into the second metacarpal. Now, that is uh, the preferred way. Now, why? I'm showing this picture with a loop is that in case uh, close reduction is not 
possible, you must open. And there, a magnification really is important for this tiny fragment, especially when you're using a, a small fragment screw systems. So this, uh, this is the X-ray that shows good reduction. Once a K wire is uh, removed, you can see the fracture is in a good place and healed well. Now, blind K wire introduction is not advisable, especially as painful neuromas can result. So you may have to make a very small incision, and there are two dorsal nerves on the thumb which has to be protected. Otherwise, no patient will come back with very severe post-operative pain. Fluoroscopy alone is inadequate to assess reduction, so immediately after your fixation, please take x-rays, especially with a, a JEDA view. And if close reduction is not adequate at that point, please revert to open reduction. And open fractures are best treated by KY fixation to minimize the implants, or if you're sure about the uh, debridement, then you can also fix it with screws. The open reduction technique is two incisions have been described. One is a straight radio palma incision or the curved Wagner incision. My preference is the Wagner incision. The radio palma incision actually is a, it goes between, at the transition of the dorsal and the palma skin, which you can see, and starts about one centimeter distal to the tip of the radio styloid and extends about four to five centimeters. Most importantly, the dorsal sensory branch of the radial nerve has to be protected in this. The Wagner incision is a preferred incision, though it has a disadvantage of risk of scarring, but it's a gentle curved incision and you do a capsulotomy and the joint is open for you, it's much easier to see the small medial volar fragment. That is important. Otherwise, on a dorsal incision, it may not always be possible to see this fragment and you're actually putting it blindly. And AO has actually perfected this lax tooth technique. I'm just taking uh, their pictures. Pointed reduction clamps to hold the fracture and you can use a 1.2 millimeter K wire to stabilize this fracture from the radial dorsal aspect. Then a 1.5 millimeter drill is used to make a hole over which a 2.0 drill for the gliding hole is made. That is on the distal fragment. And once, if the fragment is big enough for the screw fixation, then you're fine. And a small fragment, you can put a screw and maybe an additional K wire if possible. That's an X-ray. Kindly wind up. Sorry, have I crossed the time? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. So that's it. Uh, so you can have a Wagner incision and a lax screw fixation. And the final slide, this is an algorithm for Bennett fracture dislocation. Undisplaced, displaced are open. You can, undisplaced fractures, you can